Welcome to the first part in this video series of how to create atmospheric nighttime visuals in V-Ray for Rhino. In this first video we're going to be looking at how to create the base 3D model we're going to be using in our visualizations. Now I've got this file set up here where we've got an unfolded 2D drawing of the model we're looking to create. Now I actually have the 3D model already made over on the left hand side which we're going to be using as reference so you can see exactly what we're working towards in this scene. If you are using your own file for this, you likely won't have the 3D model yet, which is why we're looking to build it from the 2D. But I've purely got this here just so you can see what we're working towards as we start to model this up. I've also supplied this file as a link in the description of this video so you can follow along if you'd like to as well. Now to start with, we're going to be using these 2D drawings of our model here to help us construct the 3D model. And we need to rotate these and put these in their correct space in 3D to help essentially give us a skeleton to the 3D model we're working with. To do that I'm going to just begin by taking each of the sections and elevations and just rotating them into their correct orientation. To do this we're just going to select the object we want to ro rotate, make sure this gumball is turned on and then we're going to use this green axis here to rotate this on the Y axis, hold down the shift key and rotate it upwards 90 degrees. And we're just going to do that for the other parts of this file. Just rotating each of these sections here and then each of these elevations up into their 90 degree aspect. So they're now the right way up. Now we've done this, we're now going to move these so they're at the correct height location as well. To do this, we're just going to select the object, go to the move tool, which can be found on the toolbar here or by typing in move. Make sure you're locked vertically where it asks the point to move from. That can just be hitting the letter V or clicking on that vertical option. And then we're just going to scroll down, pick the point on this baseline of the drawing and match it to any point on the plan here. We're snapping it there. And we're just going to do these for each of these in turn. I'm not going to do them all at the same time because they might all be at slightly different levels depending on where we've drawn them. So we just want to make sure that each of these lock into vertical and then align that baseline like so with our plan there. Now usually you'll be drawing any of your 2D drawings in the flat kind of ground plane to start with so this is a useful kind of trick to start to pull them all up into their correct location. Now we've got these we can start creating our kind of 3D model from here and we're going to begin with some of these simple walls we've got on our ground floor plan. As you can see, if we look over at our kind of reference model here, and we're just going to sort of zoom in on this wall, look below, you can see we've got these kind of ground floor walls going up to this point in the model. So we're going to be starting with those elements. Now to start to build these into a 3D model, we're going to be using a tool called the extrude command. And this can be found either in our toolbar under the solid tools in extrude here, or we can type it in in the command bar. So we're going to first select the walls we want to extrude, which are these ones here. We need to make sure that these are first closed lines when we do this. And always make sure when you do your 2D drawings to finish and close off all your lines if you want to make it into a 3D model. What I mean by that is when you're drawing with the line tool, always make sure you go back to the point you started from. That will close up that object and make it a closed surface. So once we've got that, we're going to select the walls we want like so, then type in extrude into the command line and we're going to be using this extrude curve command which can be found just down here because we've got curves here and we want to extrude them into a 3D model. So once we selected that you'll see it will start to ask us to pull these up to that right height and we can actually use the sections here to allow us to find the height that we need to extrude them to. These are the walls we can see on the left and right hand side here so I'm just going to extrude them to match the top of that wall there and because we've aligned this section to its correct vertical height once we click that you can see it will then bring these walls up to their correct height as well. Now you'll see here that once I've done that it's given these a solid cap on the walls. If for some reason you've got hollow or empty walls this could mean two things. One that your lines aren't properly joined or that when you've selected them and you're typing in extrude here this solid option might be equal to no and when that happens as we can see here you end up with a kind of hole in the wall and you can see there we've got a little hole in the top face of these walls 
You can fix this by just making sure that is ticked to yes when you extrude, or once you've done them, you can just select the walls and type in cap, and that will just add a solid face to that there. So there we have our kind of base walls here. Now if you find you can't kind of zoom in or the rotation is not quite locked on to these, you can always select them, click on this zoom selected option and it will recenter your camera for you, which is quite a good way to lock back into those objects. Now once we've got those, you'll see that they're kind of greyed out at the moment, they're a sort of black colour, and that's because I'm actually modelling them on this annotations layer. And it's important that when we're doing any 2D drawing, 3D modelling in Rhino, that we're actually doing that on the correct layer to help us start to separate these objects out from one another. This is, becomes extremely useful when we start to add textures and materials because we can do it via the layer they're on. So I always try and model things of the same material on the same layer. Now in order to move these over to this walls layer I've made down here, 3D model, we can actually just select them like so, go to our properties panel, under layer, we're going to go to the walls under the 3D model and we're just going to select that and you'll see that they're now there. So that's the base part of the walls. The next elements we want to make are these larger kind of big red walls here and also this kind of floor plate and ceiling plate up top. To do that we're actually going to be using the section model here and I'm just going to take all of these lines. We've got this piece, we've got these two banks at the edge and these two large walls and also the ceiling here. And we're going to just copy them using the copy tool and move them into their correct place in the 3D model. So to do that we can just kind of hover and if we've got the smart track locked on you'll see it will automatically lock to this horizontal plane. Once you can see that locking, if you hit the tab key on your keyboard, just press it once, it will actually fully lock that into the plane so we can't accidentally move it any other direction. Once that's locked, we can then kind of move it down and find the appropriate point on our elevation, which is kind of this edge here, to snap that line to. So you see I'm just moving it along and snapping it to that line on the elevation there. So it kind of nicely lines up with my elevation, which we can see here. Once we've done that, we can use that extrude command again, just like we did in plan to extrude these objects in section as well. So I'm just gonna type in extrude. Make sure when you're extruding, we go back to the layers that we're on the correct layer. So I'm just gonna double click on that walls there. And then we're gonna extrude it all the way along and line it back up with our elevation here and snap to there. And there we have the base of our walls. Now you see here these are hollow because I didn't click that solid option so I'm just going to quickly go back, do that again, just so you can see, and then make sure this solid is ticked to yes, and then we'll snap to that far edge like so. So we're always using the elevations, the sections, all the other drawings to help us align these pieces. Now there are actually some bits here that you see that this bank actually goes all the way to this orange edge and this one goes even further out here. So if you've got that you can always just take that original curve and just extrude these individually out to the point they need to be. So it's very much just using these simple sets of tools just extruding the lines we have and starting to build this more complex 3D model like so. Now the next part gets a little bit more complex and as you can see in our completed model here we actually have a hole that's cut through into the middle of the building. You can kind of see it like that, this little kind of cut out shape here. Now currently we've just extruded our model all the way across so we don't have that hole in there, but we can see it on the elevation that it's kind of marked out by this shape here. So we're going to introduce a new tool which is found under these tools here under your boolean tools and this is called boolean difference. And what this refers to is it essentially allows you to subtract one solid shape from another solid shape. So you're basically subtracting one shape from another. In order to use this, we first need to model out the negative space that we want to subtract from our 3D model. To do that, I'm actually just going to select this elevation here and we're going to isolate it to allow us to easily work on it without the other objects in the way. And to do that, we can just select the object, go to our visibility tabs up here under standard and click on this isolate objects option. Once that's isolated under the walls, we're just going to select the polyline tool and I'm going to draw out the shape that I need to subtract. And it's essentially just following 
these lines around here snapping to this edge we want to kind of press the tab key to lock that in and then just snap it up here follow round and make sure we close off our line where we started like so once you've got that particular curve there we can then select all our objects again and unisolate them just by right clicking on that isolate tool to do the opposite of what we've done and then we can select the curve we've made and we're going to extrude this out to form the negative space that we want to create. So we're just going to extrude it out to the point that we want. Now in order to determine exactly where I need to extrude it, I'm actually going to use the walls below as a reference for this. It's basically up to this point here, like so. Once we've got that in place, we can then use the Boolean difference tool to subtract this large shape here, and we'll give this a different colour so it's easier to see. We're going to subtract the yellow shape from the red ones. So we're just going to find that Boolean difference tool, select it there. It will ask us to select the surfaces or poly surfaces to subtract from. So that's the initial shapes that we want to subtract our yellow one from. So it's this wall, this floor, this floor down here, this piece. And I think that's all of them in place. Yep. So once we've got them all, we're then going to hit enter and then we're going to select the surface to subtract with, which is our yellow one. Hit enter and you'll see it will minus one from the other. And actually there we've cut out nicely our shape from this piece and you can see it kind of matches the model on the left there. And because we've got this nice curve, it's actually created an interesting cutout here. So you'll find that by using the Boolean tool, you can start to create quite dynamic shapes that you wouldn't otherwise be able to model just using your standard solid tools there. So there we sort of chopped out that piece of our model there as well. Now once we've kind of done that you'll also be able to use boolean tools to combine objects together as well and that's the boolean union tool and some of these areas here where we've modeled as two separate pieces you might want to select them both and use the boolean union to combine them together into one and it's a nice way of just tidying up bits of your model into one solid shape. You can also, under these solid tools, find this Merge Coplanar Faces tool, which helps you tidy up all the extra faces. And if we right click on that, it will just sort of merge and tidy up some of these objects together to make them look a little bit cleaner for you there as well. So this is the initial kind of blocking pieces of this model. And to finish this kind of video off, we're just gonna be modeling the glass elements of this, which you can see in this light green here, which are slightly more complex but we'll use the tools that we've already kind of established to help us model each of these. Now, the first of these we're gonna start with is actually this nice curved piece at the back of the model. And this can be seen as this piece back here. Now, here you can see it in section, and this is section A, which is denoted by this section line cutting through there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that piece, we're just gonna copy it, and we're gonna move it across to its correct position in the model. And I'm going to do that just by holding the shift key to lock it horizontally, pressing tab to lock that in, and then just moving it along to its correct location, which should match the hole we've cut out there, like so. Once that's in place, we can select it. We're going to make sure we're on the glass layer now, and we're just going to extrude it again as we have done to form that area there. Just snap it to the edge like so. Now you can see if we sort of lock in on this piece that actually my floor isn't cut out quite far enough to show this and we're going to tidy that up in a little bit but first we're going to model out the extra bits of glass to help us determine where we need to cut that hole. So the next piece are the edges of the glass which we can see in this model here, this bit there. And we're going to find that in our section again as this element here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to copy it and move it over into its correct position. So a lot of these tools are kind of repeating the same processes we've already done, but just doing it in section, doing it in plan to create each of these. And we're going to extrude this out and we're going to give this a thickness of 0.1 meters, like so. Once we've got that, I'm actually also going to copy that over to the other side. You can use the copy tool for this as we already did, or you can use the mirror tool to actually sort of mirror it over to the correct side as well. The mirror tool can be found under your move tools, under mirror here, 
I and mean, if we select that, we can draw a mirror line, sort of locking into the middle of this glass plane here, and holding the shift key to lock it, like so. And there you can see it's just mirrored that piece across there. And we'll lock in on these so we can see these a bit more clearly. If you're having trouble kind of seeing a lot of the elements, you can always hide or turn off some of these pieces around. So we could turn off our 2D lines, delete any that we don't need, just to give us a better view of these pieces. Now, as well as this, I'm just going to turn on these because we also have a piece of glass down here, which I'm just going to extrude upwards, like so. And we have one down here as well, which we can extrude upwards into place. And what I want to do is I just want to tidy up and finish off these angles. I'm just going to turn off my lines for now. Now for this bit of glass, I actually want to fill in a glass panel in this hole that we can see here. And to do that, I'm just going to be using the box tool to create my extra pieces of glass. The box tool I prefer to use when modeling pieces like this is actually found under your box in this three point box. And I usually kind of hover this toolbar out so we can see it a bit more clearly. I'm going to select that three point box and we're going to just start by modeling it out and the way this works is you basically draw a point for each of the areas of the box so you've got the width the length the height and then we can draw it up like so then i'm going to draw another one that connects this to the one i've got here like that so there you can see they all join up once we've got all of these pieces we're then just going to select them all together and use that boolean union tool again to merge them up and if we want to tidy up some of these faces a bit, we can then use that merge coplanar faces, right click, and it will just tidy up those for us as well. We're going to do the same on this side and just Boolean union them together and merge them. Now what you'll find is that you might have bits of wall poking through this glass here, and we can actually tidy those up using the Boolean tools as well. So for this one here, I want to chop off this little corner of glass that's kind of coinciding with this wall here and also sort of this bit at the top and I also want to chop back this wall. So we're going to do this in two stages. We're first going to subtract these bits of glass away and to do that we're just going to select the object, use the boolean difference tool again, select the objects we want to subtract which are these two but under this delete input we're actually going to change this to no and what that will mean is it won't delete these objects once it subtracts them. It will just delete the shape but keep the objects in place. We're then going to do the opposite for this red one because we want to subtract the glass from the red bit. So we're going to click on the red bit, click Boolean difference again, make sure it's set to no, hit our glass and detach it like so. And there we can see we've cleaned that up. And then we're just going to do the same for this side where we're just going to detach it from this one like so. And there we have our kind of clean bit of glass. The last thing we're going to do in this video is just chop out this extra piece and we're going to be using the box tool again for that. So we're just going to determine the width of that, determine the length, just matching our piece here. You can always kind of turn on your snaps if you're not getting a good snap on that. Make sure it's intersecting through the shape and then just use that boolean difference tool again to subtract that box and we can delete that one. And there we've sort of tidied it up. So there you can see that already we're kind of really tidying up this model. We've got our nice kind of piece of glass coming through here. We've got our sort of base pieces of the model and you can see if we start to compare it, we've now just got the sort of detailed elements we need to add in. We're gonna be chopping these holes through, adding these beams on and adding a little bit of paneling detail to the front piece of the model. So we're gonna be adding that detail in the next video where we're gonna to start to introduce a few more 3D modeling tools which you might find useful for this and getting our model ready for the next stage which is texturing, lighting and then rendering the model out. So thank you for watching this initial video in this series on how to produce atmospheric nighttime visuals in V-Ray and I hope you tune in for the next one where we'll be going into more detailed modelling techniques.